so I could call this lovely meeting to order. And I'm going to look over on your copy of the agenda because I haven't pulled it up on my screen yet. Um, first order business is to review and approve the meeting minutes from January 29th. I looked those over. I don't have any comments. How about you, Fred? I have a correction to make. On, uh, oh, okay. I guess page two or I guess the first end of the first paragraph where I talk about consider going to do the, who's going to do the snow removal in a winter from it should be from the sidewalk the solar panels. Oh. <laughs> I went right past that. Yeah. So with that correction, I make a motion to approve, approve the minutes. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, you've also seen the vendor and payroll warrants. Yeah. Does anyone have any co comments on that? No. Okay. Uh, now it's time for public comment. Uh, this would be comments from the public related items not listed on the agenda. And um, I'm sorry to say there are no poll hearings tonight. Just okay. for those of you who might have been getting your hopes up. Um, okay. Seeing no hands going up. Uh, we've got a scheduled appointment uh, to consider the change of manager request from NEC OPCO 1 Inc., which is the weight lead diner. And there should be someone in lead here. Okay, great. So, yeah, the, um, the weight lead diner submitted a, uh, a request to Amy for the change of manager for their. Um, it's a. Uh, uh, the alcohol license. Wine and malt license, right? It's just wine and malt. Um, so we have done the uh, appropriate uh, background checks, and we don't have any anything else to provide. Background check conducted. Okay. Um, so um, Lee is here. If you want to ask any questions. Um, so Lee, are you are you the new manager? I am. Do you I'm want the general manager? manager. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, well, welcome to Wheatley. Thank you. <laughs> so you. Are you a resident or live about close by? I live in Wyoming. Wyoming, okay. okay. So you'd be coming to, you come to the diner every day then? I've been here so for two years. As a manager? Oh, yes. Okay. okay. Oh, but, but we're just recently as a manager. Sorry. Oh, good question. You gotta go home. I don't know what you're doing. Sorry. Thank you so great for letting John in. I should have done that. Are so changes being made as with the new manager, U.S. new manager? Yeah. As in anything. They have bigger, catch, they have bigger ketchup bottles now. <laughs> oh, they do. <laughs> a lot of changes have been made. I've been here for two years uh -huh. as a general manager, just cleaning the place up. Um, stricter rules as far as employees mm -hmm. and customers and things like that. It's it's really cleaned up a lot. Okay. As far as the alcohol, it's still the same. Um, we serve 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., 12, uh, 12 p.m. on Sundays, mm -hmm. and it's only a two beer minimum uh, limit, and they have to purchase food. Yeah. Um, I apologize for coming in late. The My new manager. Yes, I, 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 I gathered that. Um, my only question is, I, I drive by the diner a lot. Um, and I don't know whether you're aware that when we provided the alcohol license 10 years, no, not, not 10 years ago, yeah, probably yeah. seven, eight years ago maybe, um, we created a new pa uh, traffic pattern for the large uh, trailer trucks. And the trucks aren't adhering to that pattern anymore. Uh, if you are facing the diner from 510, the road immediately to the left, which you go into the diner parking lot, mm -hmm. they're not supposed to exit by that driveway. And there were signs there once. They're still there. They're, they're still there, there, but they're not they're adhering there. to them at right. all. And that was one of the, when, and I know you weren't here, so I, I, I'm just giving you a little, little bit of background. When we had neighbors come in to discuss the alcohol license, their concern was the traffic pattern. 
and to, to minimize the, the chance for some kind of an accident, do or not do to alcohol intake. Um, it was agreed that all trucks would exit down going south and then curb, whether they're going north or south on 510, they would take that exit and, and that entrance by the parking lot would be strictly an, an entrance as opposed to an exit to, to prevent the chaos. first one. You're talking about the first one. I'm, I'm talking about the one that hugs the diner. Yeah. For okay, yeah. okay. They're the, not supposed to come in that They're way. not supposed to exit or that exit way. that way. And there are signs. And, and yeah, there and they signs. and they are. Mm -hmm. And and I've noticed it a lot. Um, you know, when I say a lot, it, you know, it's not like it's a daily thing, mm -hmm. but more than I used to. And, I, and I'm convinced that it's just because of, of a lack of awareness. So, but I just wonder as, as the new manager, whether there's something you can do to, 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 to get it right again, because it was right for a long time. So I'm still trying to feel this one out. Because, I'm pulling up the map. I'm sorry? I'm pulling up the map. Oh, <laughs> because the gas station is primarily in charge of the parking lot and the truckers that come in there. I deal with them when they come into the restaurant. Right. I mean, there's something I can certainly at, send a message at the to. Point, and again, I, I may be not remember to, to, to quote Roger Clemens, I may be misremembering, but the, the ownership of the gas station and the diner at that point was the same. Yeah. Now that may not be the case no, any it longer. Is. It is still yeah. the case. Yeah. So the people who came in here looking for the alcohol license wasn't the man. That, that was not the manager. That was the owner. Okay. So as the manager, I would hope that you would have a voice to, if it's a good owner. Absolutely, yes. You would have a voice to that owner. Yeah. Relay that, please. I will. So. Yeah. And again, it's not your bailiwick yeah, per se, yeah. but. But it was one of the one of the one of the requirements of the alcohol license. Okay. I'll send okay. that along. Okay. I guess we didn't need the map after all. <laughs> okay. So do we need any action? Just accept. Yeah, we would need to vote to. Okay. Can I hear a motion? A motion to accept the, the new uh, manager at the Whaley Diner, Lee. Yep. Sorry. Lord Gordon. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, under old business, uh, we want to discuss and possibly vote to enter into a contract with Mass DEP uh, and WM Recycle America LLC for recycling services. And we got a copy of that in our packet. Yep. And I did not get a chance to read over what you sent at council review, but um, it sounded like it wasn't. He doesn't have any substantive changes that would prevent us from signing this tonight. We talked about this really in depth yeah. probably two meetings ago. Um, it really reflects the state of the recycling market um, currently. And it, I, I mean, there's, so this is a, it's a contract between MassDEP, all the participating communities who are going to use the MRF and um, WM Recycle America. Um, so, in this situation, it's really not. While he may have recommended some language, some wording changes, it's not really going to yeah. fly. And he didn't think it was, you know, okay. was worth of any substance to, to do that. So. Okay. All right. Um, we don't need to vote because we did that before. Is it, or do we need to vote before? Um, I think we could have a vote on record. Okay. Uh, well, I'll make a motion that we. Um, vote to enter into the contract between Mass DEP and the uh, contractor for, for the dual stream designated community. That's Sad an odd title. But Sadly, I will second it because I, I see this as being rife with problems down the road that it, they're just going to come yeah. up and it's just going to be a disaster, but I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. And just so people, folks at home know, um, recycling is still cheaper than tossing it in a bag and putting it in the not recycle. Okay, that's the one that drives me nuts when the newspapers put articles about how expensive recycling is going to be and they never remember to say, oh, but it's cheaper than putting it in a landfill. Um, oh, and there's no little 
Twinkie and X right here. Yeah, okay. sorry. Brian, are, are we going to at some point talk about the, the fees for people using the recycling center? Yeah, um, Fran yeah. Fortino is going to be at the next, uh, at the next joint meeting? select board finance committee meeting. Okay, so we can wait all the way till then. Yeah, okay. we can talk about um, the best way to pay for the increases. All right, okay. I figured that was a more appropriate time to discuss it because we have both boards that have interest in that discussion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, while the signatures are going by there, uh, next item is to discuss and vote, to, <coughs> excuse me, possibly to award a contract for the Williamsburg Road Bridge Project. So we don't have a recommendation to award tonight, but we would like to discuss it. Okay. And that's why I keep here. That's, uh, that's what I understand from the packet. Yeah. Um, so the bids were due, I think it was last week, two weeks ago. Um, we received four bids, and let me pull it up here. The low bidder was uh, Clayton D. Davenport Trucking. I usually mix those up. Um, Greenfield. From Greenfield, all the bids were Relatively close, they were all within a hundred thousand of each other. Um, so the bid, the lowest bid was five hundred sixty-seven, four hundred thirty-seven dollars, five hundred sixty-seven thousand four hundred thirty-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. That's the base bid. The alternate bid was um, eighty-four thousand four hundred fifty-nine for a total bid of six hundred fifty-one thousand eight hundred ninety-six dollars. That's for the base plus alternate one. Um, we have a small bridge grant that we received from the state for four nine for four hundred ninety seven thousand um, dollars. We're we're estimating that a hundred well one hundred and four of that's uh, buried in design, and then there's additional amount that's going to be needed for wall, uh, water quality monitoring. That's a condition imposed by the conservation commission on mm -hmm. the project because um, well because the city of Northampton requested it because the brook that the two bridges cross um, feed the lower reservoir. So um, we have around, we estimate around $380,000 left in the grant. So we have um, really a shortfall that we need to discuss about how we manage that. Um, so I don't know if Keith, you want to add anything at this point, but. Yeah, I can go over where we are Certainly one of our options is to utilize Chapter 90 money. Um, another thing that's also being done is um, engineer, our engineer has gone back to MassDOT, the, the bridge engineer, and sharing with them the information and seeing you know, what their thoughts are, whether there's any possibility of us um, getting more of the BRI money, which I, I certainly don't think it will work in the timing that we need it, but we're going to look at that option. But getting back to my Chapter 90, where we're at, I have um, a balance right now, $144,000 um, with the, the, do you have those in front of you? Yeah. Okay, so with the supplemental money that we received as of January 1st of this year, gives me a total available of $158,000. Um, anticipated funds, in other words, what we would probably be looking at in receiving for Chapter 90 for this upcoming fiscal year, will, depending on whether they go back to their old number or include that supplemental will vary from anywhere from 100, 144 to 159. So potential available as of July 1st would be 303, 600 to 318. Um, when I then factor in the projects that we have already committed and need to do this summer out of chapter 90 money, which are all listed there. Um, <clears throat> those those projects come up to fifty six thousand dollars. 
and then when you subtract the the low end of the potential money available it leaves us in the vicinity if I was to commit all of the remaining chapter 90 money it's 247,000 which leaves me about twenty thousand dollars short So just to reiterate that, you know, that with my um, chapter 90 that I need to do, which is 56,000 for this, and I'm doing things pretty, you know, looking at things pretty tight, pretty conservative, um, to see just how much, but really stretching it every nickel, if how much I can apply. And I come up with, like I said, that 247,000, which, if you look at the very bottom, the we're we're mm -hmm. short two sixty nine, and that leaves us short about twenty one thousand dollars that we would have to potentially still find another source if I commit all of the remaining chapter ninety that I have carried forward and getting this year. That being said. The other, you know, certainly I'm not recommending it, but I'm, because we've already, this, this, um, the road got closed in 2010. So we've already had it down and out for 10 years. Yeah. Um, I'm not by any means saying we should try to pick up and go home and, and pull the plug on it. We've already, we've already invested um, money in it. And if we did that, we're not going to ever see anything for that money that got invested. Um, and so my recommendation is we find some way somehow to to see it through. Keep that 21 and change cannot be made up through just labor from you guys? Mm, no, I mean, at the moment, that's a hard numbers out of the contractor. The one thing that but I'm saying you couldn't you couldn't do part of that contractor work. Well, the one thing that again that we since we just got these numbers and haven't had a chance to fully um, dissect them, and that is the alternate one that the contractor bid on was to co do the completion of the the tying in of the road work. From the from the bridge to the existing road, there's some work that we bid it that way so that if we wanted to have the town do it, we could do it. However, I got there's I will still have expenses in that. There's some you know I'm I still have to buy gravel. I still have to provide guardrail. So there's still some expenses that are. Mm -hmm incurred by us but i may be able to cover that twenty one thousand. i haven't had a chance to make that determination yet so uh, alternative one says eighty four thousand dollars so if we did not ask the contractor to do the alternative one work you're saying that's work that you out of that 84 i could potentially save that cover that twenty one thousand. or correct but you're you're what, 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 you're saying you can't do all of the work that they would have done for eighty-four thousand dollars? No. Or you can do all of. I, that I work? can. We can do it. I'm just saying that I You'll can't. I can't months. make the eighty-four disappear. Oh yeah. There, I within that eighty-four, there's some things I still have to buy. Oh, uh, understood. So I'm getting. Uh, I'm trying to get an idea of um, if we don't have them do that work and you do that work, how much? Do and that I don't know yet. Or you don't know because yet. Because okay. we just, I, in fact, I, uh, numbers are just okay. coming into us. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Fred. Okay. So, do I, uh, I, if I understand this correctly, if you were to use all, your one option here is to use all of Chapter 90 you have remaining this year plus all of next year's. Well. And you still wouldn't have enough. You would be 21,000 short. If, if we have the contractors do it all. All right, well, if we tell the contractor you're only going to do the base bid, yeah. 
then we have $84,000 of which I would hope that we could still do the job and not spend 84000 and make up that 21000 okay. shortfall. But, but, but you're still looking at, you're not going to have much left though either way. No. So what, what are you foregoing, if you did this, if you did with Chapter 90 for two years, what are you going to forego for this year and next year? Well, I mean, at, at, at this point, what I can tell you is we're in a little bit of a you know, better situation in the aspect that I've basically been carrying. I've, I've been anticipating this, and I'm, we're carrying 144 forward from last year. So the amount of money that we would be getting which will be usually sometime in April is when we would get our next allotment. We'll be getting a letter in the mail in April of 2020, which will be the money for fiscal year 21. And then it would mean that we would have to do these projects that I have on the list, but then I wouldn't be able to really do anything until the following July, which isn't too, too bad. I'm not having to really skip a year. Will your materials go for a while? Um, in what? The materials areas? seem to go up. As far Every as... Every time we get into a fight with China. So yeah, but I mean, the, the, the numbers that I have here in front of me for, for the stuff that I'm doing this summer, yeah. those numbers are already set. Okay. There's, those will not change. Okay. Uh, I, have, I have made two suggestions here that I think we should pursue before we decide on this. And one is to go back, I think you referred to go back to the state and ask them if there's more money since uh, this was a 2010 appropriation of what, 497,000. Yeah. If you, you know, if we present the case to them, Brian, of, of uh, looking at the, uh, Increase in construction costs every year, which is like 4% a year, add 4% for 10 years, and what are you going to come up with? I mean, you're, you're going to add yeah. quite a bit, quite a bit more. I, I, I guess I would ask the state, you know, if you're going to, this is 10 year old uh, figures that, that we can't build it for that today, and, and ask them if there's more money, money available. Uh, the, the, other, the other suggestion I'd have is is to ask the, the property owners if they wanted to contribute some of this, and by that I mean the, the major property owner there is Northampton, what? So Call it, uh, water no point, water, water department. Because uh, this serves, well, Haydenville Road is, is served mostly by Northampton Water. I think they own both sides of Hayden, Haydenville Road. Uh, and then there was a, there was a spur, uh, was a Grass Hill Road that goes up to the north where property owners are, which Trash. is private property owners, plus there's uh, Northampton Water Works owns, Water Department owns property there. So I, I guess I would suggest writing to Northampton Water Department, say if you want to maintain access to your property, do you wish to contribute to this project? Because uh, I assume they don't pay taxes, right, being a public... No. They pay. Oh, do they, they pay? Pilot. Do they pay I, tax? I think they're getting something. Another, something, but but not another, not for the amount of, of property that they own there. Yeah. No. And another avenue that we have looked into years ago, and it certainly doesn't hurt to look into again, is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Well, because right. they have a lot of land that fronts the bridge. It's their right. frontage. They're on the south side, I think, isn't it? And yeah. they. It's, you know, if the road is forever closed, yeah. there goes the state's access to their property also. Right. And so, you know, this happens to be the Commonwealth, I mean, the Department of Fish and Wildlife land, but it's still their land, and, it, and you would think that they would have a, a vested interest in it also as far as continuing to have access to their property. Yeah. Do they not have access at all now? They don't care if they have yeah, right. Hayden, though, right? There are, there are parcels of land the state owns all across the state 
that and just that doesn't have access. And 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 I'm just pointing. No, I know. I get it. I, I, I just I, I I just worry that 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 will be. That would be a waste of time. Yeah, and and and, and with the emphasis on on time, but that's the, water, the clock ticks. The water department does have access, so, mm -hmm. uh, right yeah. to the to the Haydenville Road and, and the other the other road. Now the other road is that is that considered a town road? The Dry Hill Pesson? and Grass Hill are right. both discontinued. They're discontinued. Uh, okay. And Dry Hill is where we have residents that live. Resident that lives in Wade. Okay, and is Haydenville Road, all of it still considered with our public road mileage, or only the part that's open? Just Williamsburg Road is... I mean, Williamsburg Road, yeah. Williamsburg Road is still contributing to our road mileage. Oh, it's the, 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 yes. the entire length, okay. Yep. Well, I, I, I think we, I'd like to see these two options I presented to yeah. See what response we get before we we decide mm -hmm. on this. And the uh, way I understand, we have uh, Brian what ninety days to accept the. You can ask for a contract. I mean, yeah, ask for an extension. Well, it's, the the bid document is the thirty days, but it's subject to a written extension by the uh, mm -hmm. by the contractor. And I'm yeah. sure if they want the work, they would be willing to do it within a reasonable period of time. Then. Yeah. And you only need to have. Um, 2% inflation to have a $500,000 grant be worth uh, $593,000 10 years later. Yeah, but the grant was provided in 2016. Yeah, the grant was. Yeah. Oh, and okay. So then if it's the, moment, the language, and I don't believe they've changed it, is, is a cap of $500,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah. But in four years at 4%, that's up to almost exactly what this base bid is. Yeah, I five, you know. saying, now, they, just, I'm just saying not, Fred's yeah. got a good point yeah. there yeah. and 4% was spot on if it's only 4 years it's actually, if, it was, yeah. if it was 10 years then it would be more like 2% but, um, now I know in Franklin County I believe it was Warwick there have been other communities that have been awarded this grant money mm -hmm. and have started down the process and said then they've turned it, they've turned it back because they can't afford to do the work. I, don't know. I, I think presenting at the moment, we're still we're not that far, that bad off to the point where we gotta. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still think ask. It's actually if you if you go by the construction cost index, it's it's actually four point two percent. That's the figure you should the average what you should be using. Uh, state knows that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, still think it's worth asking yeah. that and tell them the shortfall and where we stand I, I mean present them the whole picture Brian not just we want uh, four percent more every for four years uh, tell them where we stand and maybe they'll they'll listen to us give us more money I, don't I mean know. they're the ones who are forcing us to build a more than half a million dollar bridge right. uh, in a place where this I mean this shouldn't take ten years and it shouldn't be you know upwards of a half a million dollars to build it that's sorry that's my rant i only get one what day. is our should those avenues not succeed what is our plan to start the project as quickly as possible i mean as joyce currently points out this has been 10 years and if if the state says no, then we we don't want. I, I, I guess I, I guess my point is I don't think we want to wait too long for a state response that could be painfully slow, glacially slow, to well, to delay this even more. Well, okay, ask them by a response within ninety days, sixty days, or whatever. Right. Another know. thing that Brian and I discussed, and Brian, did you get an answer in regards to can we even sign a contract when we don't have? Yeah, if we don't have the. No, I, I, I need to. I need. We need to figure out when we consider Chapter ninety funds available, available or received by the town, okay. for purposes of entering into a contract. 
And you guys are assuming that putting this back out to bid again, that's a two month process. The numbers that. are so good in regards to we won't get a better so bid. They're, right, they're a tight, I, I can't foresee. The only, and then we've already discussed things with our engineer about trying to yank something out and do something. And there's just nothing that we can effectively take out of the bid to try to reduce it and still okay. make it happen. So I knew, like I said, definitely by the by. Year, we just wanted to update you, but definitely by the next board meeting, I should have a better handle on what we can do the alternate one ourselves for, and see how much that can be reduced. Um, I'm just going to get back to Fred's question. I want to not forget to, to let Harlan um, speak. Um, the his question was, what are you not going to do if we spend um, basically zero out your Chapter 90 money? And I find it hard to believe that a quarter million it's, of, of Chapter 90 money could go away yeah, and it doesn't I mean, affect what you can do. Certainly one of the things that I'm also looking at in the near future needing to happen, and it's another one on Laser Road, is the culvert that's out just about at the town line in that swampy area needs to be replaced and so needing to do I originally was also hoping to with the chapter 90 that I was sit, sitting on to do a notice of intent and get that culvert replaced um, so that's something that would not happen if it's to gonna have to be deferred, to be deferred. yep could um, we apply for MVP money for that that's culvert? one thing that we're we're hoping to as soon as we get qualified to the MVP yeah we're it's pretty pretty soon isn't it Brian um, yeah, that contract it needs to be wrapped up by June 30th. Okay. But you now, even the timing of that is not going to help us, though, right? <coughs> no, but for some of the things that I'm having for the future, future. Yeah, yeah, okay, future, right. but not for this project. And another thing that with the um, just where I am at with the roads right now, we're we're not I'm not in detrimental shape with conditions of the roads. Um, and again, I would still have a whole nother allotment of Chapter 90 available in July of 2022. So I'm really not, I'm still doing, or no, I would have it in 21, I mean. I would have FY22, I would have available in July of 21. Um, so I'm really not having to skip a year. Yeah. But the, the I could foresee, uh, I guess, two major projects that you're going to have is uh, on Christian Lane, you know, the culvert that you mentioned one yep. time, and, and even the bridge on Christian Lane is the only bridge in town that's <coughs> weight restrictions on it. So uh, that there would not be Chapter 90. No, but two major projects that the town is going to have to devote resources to. Well, well Chapter no, 90 or other. We wouldn't have to devote any resources to the bridge. You could get a small bridge grant for the that. Bridge, well, okay, okay, okay. The bridge, we, when, we, when a bridge needs gets replaced under federal money, we don't have to put anything okay. into it. Okay. okay. And that was a federal bridge. For okay. Nothing. Now, and here's another just ironic thing is the bridges that we are replacing are not eligible for federal funds presently because they're less than a 20 foot span. The bridges that are going to be going in are going to be a 40 foot span and a 50 foot span. So when they need it to be replaced in the future, we won't be looking at town money. It'll be okay. Yeah. Well, I guess some, somebody designing was thinking about the future. Um, let um, if it's okay, I'd like to let Harlan. I know you had your hand up earlier. Thanks for you. Your... answered some of the questions, but I did want to point out. On Keith's numbers and just listening to him talk, if I remembered correct, correctly from what you said, Keith, the $21,000 shortfall, that takes into consideration, he took the conservative Chapter 90 money yes. for next yeah. year, the low end. Right. So there's a much better likelihood that that money will be even closer, e even closer yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, um, your, the $84,000 alternative one, he is certainly going to be able to do that 
yes. significantly cheaper than any contractor. That's probably probably greater than fifty percent less. So there should be. Yeah, he, he'll have yeah. from just what I'm hearing tonight with his numbers. <laughs> it sounds like you know there's never an excess, but you're gonna it can be covered now. I do like the idea of going back to the state. I would save your ink on writing to the city of Northampton or any other <laughs> thing over there, but well, you never know. Yeah. We could get creative. I have some ideas. But and and on, as Jonathan spoke, as being a landowner up there that is greatly affected by these bridges, I appreciate the fact that you are at least at this point concerned about moving forward and getting it done. Mm -hmm. It's it's time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything you want to add to that? So it sounds like there's no decision at this point, but we should be ready to. Make but we should write the letters. I mean, I, I, okay. I, I think the, I think, I think Harlan's right. The writing to the city, we should do it. But you know, I, I, I wouldn't write a bunch of follow-up letters because I don't think they're going to pay any attention. The certainly the town of Williamsburg is not going to help us at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And. We should we should contact the state, but again, it's it's having to deal with with two different DOTs, which is not as we learned not fun. So mm -hmm. we have to be strategic about this, but it's got to be quick. Yeah. Okay. How much does Northampton get in marijuana revenue? Money <laughs> guys. <laughs> clean water. Yeah. Clean water. Okay. You need clean water for that. Of course. Uh, for <laughs> <laughs> no, no pun if you, if you did. No, no pun intended. Are you kidding for him? Pun intended. Okay. All right, next up um, was um, our, our, other fun project. our other fun project to discuss the status of sidewalk reconstruction on Chestnut Plain Road and winter maintenance. I mean, I just sort of wanted yeah. to keep the discussion going on this. Um, yeah. I know Keith met with Sarah Campbell Tuesday, yes. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. To yes. try to finalize the specifications there, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to um, finish up some of the some of the bid documents for that. Yeah. Um, if you recall, our plan is to go forward and not specify within those specifications um, any of the any of the sidewalk uh, sidewalk work. That'd be, that'd be no crosswalk. project crosswalk work. Thank you. Um, so I think we're we're pretty close to moving that forward, yeah. right? Yes. Getting that out Things to bid. Are looking pretty good um, the, the last thing that she's gonna come back and do is we need to come up with a um, something that we can negotiate with the way the end which we um, so she's preparing that information for us to do that so Brian at the moment Brian and I and the way the end will sit down and see what we can do with that and report back to you there um, as far as the, the last thing that, that I had pursued and talked to the engineer about and she was going to look into, and, and that is for the, to delineate the, the crosswalk was to mill and embed the reflectors, per, you know, parallel or perpendicular across the road. So that as, because one, we continue to hear that one of the things with the lights is the residents do not want to see the lights flashing all night long or even have to look at the, the, the solar, you know, the big solar panel that will, so consequently that leaves us with another option of, of doing or the reflectors so that every time a vehicle approaches, their lights will illuminate the crosswalk and then when they drive by, there'll be no light left. Um, so, and I don't think it's just the residents, by the way, who are against the flashing lights. I, I, you know, I personally, I don't want to. And, and again, one of the, the things, basis. right, that we, you know, this, that we definitely have that's a little different is we are not like over on Sunday on Route 47, and there, there's a lot more pedestrian traffic over there because of the colleges and the and all of the. Right the kids that walk to for to go to college and get out of the apartments and go to the bus stops so we don't have that kind of volume 
Um, we can certainly start, I would say, conservative and then um, change things in the future if, if we wanted to install the flashing LEDs or something like that. That could be done at a later time, but. Um, and we can put it in my speed hub. And, and, and again, the same thing goes with that. That can be that could be done at a later time. As I said, the biggest dilemma we have there is is the way the drainage is set and the water. Oh, needs the hump doesn't go all the way to the edges. It goes you, in between the crosswalks, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't go to the edges for um, for drainage purposes. You, At least the ones on College Lane don't. Okay. Um, then um, so the the crosswalks themselves mm -hmm. are between dumps. Yep. And so and the that, people know, complaining about speeding in that part of town um, would welcome that. But I know you've also countered with, well, if there's, you know, since some of that traffic is trucks, that's going to be right. more noise. I did. So it's not clear right now which which would be preferred by the residents. Right. So it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be premature to include it here, but I do want it to be in yep. on I did contact the city of Northampton and the DPW and, and talked to the director there and asked who mm -hmm. what they've gotten from complaints and she said it's the it's the abutters that complain mm -hmm. because of the noise because the noise and they, they've actually had to redo some there was an article in the paper okay but the again the street, you know, it's, one of them streets they had to redo I don't know mm -hmm. why you didn't say why uh, I mean I know yeah. well those ones were like little books. how much noise so, yeah. is created by just a little misalignment of at a bridge abutments when a truck trucks go by, yeah. and never mind. Yeah. Having no. No, I think I appreciate the noises. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what you brought up last time. But, so. If you put the delineators in there, is 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 there a way to do it so it's not in a wheel path? Because if it's yes. in a wheel path, you're going to get some. No, they'll some noise. We would so. look. We would put them so that they won't be in the wheel paths. There'd be five, okay. five across. There'd be one like on the on the shoulder, yeah. one in the middle of your wheel, okay. one at the center so, line, and then so yeah, there'd be five, five on each approach, okay. from each direction. Okay. And, and the good scenario is that I can compare them to right now is if you drive down Route Five, north or south of Christian Lane. The reflectors that your lights pick up on the center lines right. would be the, basically what you'd be having, except across the road. It, are you aware of any of that any going across the road in the area? Um, I have done some, you know, not locally, but there are areas that they have. Okay. Um, they do even have implant embedded ones that are LEDs, but again, they they. Mm -hmm. They flash all night long. Right, so. yeah. Yeah, okay. Don't they also make reflecting um, crosswalk paint? Yes, and that will be part of the plan. That is part of the plan. Okay. That's what they use in Northampton on, on Elm Street. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it will be thermoplastic, which has got glass beads mixed into the thermoplastic. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay, on to new business. Um, the next is uh, the letter. Um, that will not be discussed tonight. Okay. <coughs> no. Okay. So, Jonathan informed me that that has been shipped off to study group to a study group. Right. So it's in purgatory. So, in but purgatory. It, we'll we'll discuss it later on when I recraft something. Oh, okay. Damn. I know. Okay. Trust so we can't like just change letters. Say get it out of purgatory. We, no, purgatory is till 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 the end of the session. The session. Okay. So. And it was, right. it was sponsored. It was sponsored by Comfort, right? Or submitted yeah. by Comfort. Co-sponsored by. <coughs> but we'll 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 revisit that mm. in the next couple of weeks. All right. Okay. So I'll make the meeting even shorter. Yeah, I good. The meeting's even shorter. <laughs> Uh, well, the next item, I don't. The still administrative budgets. Yeah. Still working on those. Okay. Yeah. Um, at least maybe we could appoint Shelley Yagajinsky. 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 Yep. Great to the Recreation Commission. She's I'd like wonderful. to nominate Shelley to the Recreation Commission. I will second that. Um, do I have any further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Aye. All right, great. Oh my gosh. We're going to be out of here by seven. Yeah, that's depending upon Brian being a good boy. No, he's not the only one at this table who sometimes needs to be a good boy, to use an overly gender specific term. Okay, town administrator updates. So I'm wondering if you guys, well, the center school committee is wondering if you have time on March 19th to hear oh, yeah. their recommendation and report. Thank you. Gone? Was it a week ago? No, I'm gone. Uh, it's, week before, yeah, I'm, done. I'm gone most of the week, but I'm actually, my flight is now settled. Oh, and assuming it's not late, spring I can be here for that. Are, it, are there recommendations going to be consistent with the mandate that they were given when they were formed? I believe so. You say hesitantly? Yeah. Happy to see uh, but I just would caution that there was a mandate, and the mandate was very specific with with what we were what we asked them to do. So yes, I, I yes. Some of the things in the mandate I don't I don't think were have been done or will be done because there's no when I say expertise on the committee to do it. Well, that's why we were trying to maximize the level of expertise on the committee yeah. originally. And we did reach out to people that would help us, but they declined or never showed up, so. Couldn't we let the committee make their report before we start tearing it apart? No, I'm not tearing it apart. I'm just wondering what, what, what we're going to see, that's all. Okay, 6.30, you say, on the 19th, or is it 6? I don't, for me, it, it won't matter, uh, assuming my plane is on time, I'll be in mid-afternoon, so. Um. I thought you said six. Yeah, yeah it must, I think it's six. Okay. March 19th, you say? Yeah. I have a um, South County EMS Board of Oversight meeting. Can do it at five? Uh, if it's an hour. I don't know if they can do it at five, right? Well, I don't know if we, we yeah. want to hear more than an hour. Oh, we can. We can. I can. I, you know what? I'll, I'll. I'll work around the EMS. Well, they're available at five. We've been meeting at five most of the time anyway. So, I can ask for five. It's five preferred. Is six a backup? Will that help you? Or? That will. Yeah, and I can just be a little late to the board of oversight meeting if need be. Okay. It's fine with me then. I'll put it in. <coughs> they appreciate having. Uh, Larger period of time than 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of mm -hmm. <coughs> a regular meeting. So, okay. Okay, good. All right. Um, oh, sorry. Proposed zoning amendments to the solar bylaw that's included in your packet. Um, I think I also sent, I think I also forwarded you the email. Um, the public hearing for that is scheduled for March 10th. So, if you have comments, you can submit them to the plan. That's board. for which hearing? Uh, solar propose, bylaw. And then this is solar bylaw. Uh, what time? Uh, March 10th at 645. We can submit written yep. comments because that would be not here. Yep. Uh, there's a finance committee and board of selectmen meeting. Here at finance, yeah, at 6. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's, I'll put it on the calendar here. I have some kind of general comments yeah. if you want them now or not. Uh, well, the yeah. for aqua, aquifer protection district, you talk about storage and manure. Yeah, uh, I can give you background on that. I just suggest a, a definition of what that is. I mean, there's manure, there's compost, and maybe other things. What that is, and and the other thing is maybe involve the board of health in some decision as to whether that's what what it constitutes or not. Who's going to decide what it is? Maybe it's the Board of Health should make the decision. Um, let me let me talk a little bit about what's driving this. Okay. Um, which kind of it gets into the water merchant project update. Right. Um, so there was a um, it was brought to the attention of the water superintendent, water commissioners of a um, manure pile that was adjacent to the pump house, um, and. 
Um, the new pump house. No, the existing pump house. And um, they consulted with Mass DEP as to what, you know, what what's a proper course of action for that. And Mass DEP came back with the recommendation, and they said, "Oh, by the way, we know that you're trying to merge two water systems. And in order to do that, you need to have have adopted um, regulations. I, I don't know exactly what the CMR is, but regulations for your zone two." Um, for your for your for your wellheads, so zone one is the area media around. Mm -hmm. and zone two is larger. It's based on um, mm -hmm. how much gallons per minute you pump. It's right. where you where the where the boundary is. Um, you need to have regulations for zone two that comply with CMR. I don't remember exactly. what exactly it is. Um, and I'm sure there's historical reason for this, but in the zoning bylaw, there's our aquifer protection overlay district, which has. Um, pretty much those regulations verbatim mm -hmm. minus the manure language um so right I, can, I can <laughs> we can kind of guess maybe that that may have been taken out at some point mm -hmm. um but mm -hmm. long story short um in order for us to merge the two water systems they need to have that language in a regulation okay. um while at the same time mass dep said we're not going to tell you what you need what else you need for your permits? We're going to tell you, but this is you need this till till we apply, which is mm. kind of frustrating. Um, mm. So, anyways, that's why that language is in there. Um, okay. that, so that exact language that is in there is is from the CMR. Um, I know the I believe the question was asked of Mass DEP what that means, it's, yeah. and it, the other the other it came up in the context of what's a stockpile. Well, all right. mm -hmm. um, and they, I don't think they provided any guidance whatsoever as to um, what a stockpile is. Um, or, I think, or what manure is, I guess. You need a definition, too. Oh, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. Well, it could be yeah. compost. It, it, manure will be, could be could compost? Be, could be, depending on what's in there. So, I mean, uh, it's, in situations yeah, like this, it's, stretch, but no, okay. no, it's possible. Reasonable less and common sense kind of yeah. have to rule okay. today. Okay. Okay, Chris. But it's safe to say they will not approve the merger without this bylaw being in effect, correct? That's what they said. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, they also said, well, we're not going to tell you what else you need until you apply. Right. Because we wanted to be proactive. But yes, it's pretty clear that they said if we don't have regulations consistent with the CMRs, that they're not going to. Is anyone going to give us a beef for, that, for adding this bylaw? A beef? Uh, well, I can tell you that, so any, <laughs> I thought I'd be talking about some of my job. <laughs> any existing manure stockpile um, that's in existence at the date the notice of the public hearing is filed is technically grandfathered. Um, mm. So it would be any It'd be new manure. stockpiles of manure? Can I kind of jump in here for a second? Because I'm new yes, in, you may. Yes, my I'm, name is John Luke, and I'm actually new in town. I turned my wheelhouse. I, I did technical assistance training for public water supply operators for 30 years. I just retired a couple of years ago. I did training in this state and, you know, with the Rural Water Association, New Hampshire, Vermont, and here. And I, I started well, off, I started off with wellhead protection plans. So the zone one, zone two stuff is like, whoop. <clears throat> I haven't dealt with Massachusetts for the last several years. But zone one is an isolation zone. And manure piles in the isolation zone, eh. <laughs> zone two, sure, you can have it. Zone two contributes water to the zone one. You know, I mean, is, is, am I, is, is the pump house right down on the Hatfield side of, of uh, just, is over the Hatfield line on Christian no, Line there? No. North about 1,000 feet north of the town line. Okay, but it's over there close pump to the highway? Yeah, yeah, behind. Uh, so the highway's right there. That's, I mean, the biggest risk we got is that well is that highway. Yep, and, and, and if I remember years ago, came over here for the village system, there's a well up mm -hmm. off of uh, whatever the hell the road, under the road the other time. Uh, I was thinking there's a Williamsburg road going up over the hill, okay. north center of town. And so when you merge them, you're just merging both systems physically, so the water from those wells is also contributing? No, those mm -hmm. wells. It's just going to be the direction. town's well. Right. Yep. So that yep. stuff's yep. offline. That, that storage tank's offline too now? For the water district, correct. Yeah. Okay. So the will yeah, I don't think I'll have a problem with that. What was your name? John Lucan, L-E-K-I-N. I love DP. DP is the world Yes. And you said you're new to town? L-U-K-I-N. Yes, I moved, I bought a house down here in 2000. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
September, I retired to the warmth. I lived up uh, Westmoreland, New Hampshire, but retired to the warmth of Massachusetts. So you have like a T1 and D1 or T2 and D2? What's that? You have operator's license? No, I don't have an operator's okay. license. I just, I just trained. Nice try. Well, okay. I'm not well, I mean, I'm I'm I am going to suggest though that that, that okay. it, you know the DEP will get their. We don't want to ruffle their feathers. No. Yeah. And if if they want a a bylaw, we got We should give them a bylaw. Otherwise, they're going to say, well, get a bylaw. You, you right. dopes. We told you. Right. Okay. My advice with DEP was always yeah. give them what they need, do what you got to do. Right. right. <clears throat> If they, yeah. need, they need paper, that's what keeps them happy. So show them paper. Right. And, and I think we could do I'm just wondering which committee you'd like to be um, <laughs> appointed to. Uh, because you, 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 you seem like you know somebody, anybody would like to work with, and then just. No, well, I, I'm, I, I'm, painting my, I'm painting inside. Oh, we need months. painters. Right, I'm looking for, I want to come see the conservation commission. I'm trying to start, I have to start getting into the town a little bit. Oh, OK. Oh, that's a lovely committee to start with. The meeting tonight. So they're there. discussing this project. So and well, so I, know, and I, I want to meet your, your superintendent because the water commission would be interested in that. Okay. Okay. Cultural well, council. Well, 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 welcome to town. Cultural system. cultural council is always looking for people. You know, I, I see the well uh, sitting over there for I guess it's Hatfield's well on the other side of the line. Yep. But, and I'm like, well, it's like you can spin it from the highway, and I was like, oh, it makes me nervous. You can spin it across from the highway too. Yeah. You got to spin across a river, but yeah. yeah. But we don't do that. Right. Okay. No, of course not. All right. Okay. Um, so, so anyways, just to wrap up the water merger project update. So, um, we're actually in front of Conscom in 10 minutes, um, looking to get the, there was a notice of intent filed for the, for the proposed booster station, um, north of the center cemetery. So, um, hopefully that will be granted tonight. Um, and then we'll be applying to Mass DEP for the system modification to combine the two systems. And then I'm sure we'll give us a whole checklist of other things that we need. Are we on? Are we on time? Are we on schedule? Um, doesn't sound like it entirely. I don't feel like we are. No, no I don't think so. Um, I would have liked to see yeah. this. I would have liked to see this go in front of the conservation commission in September, October. Um, but I don't think their engineer was very responsive. Um, would it be asking too much if? For the next meeting, we see a project timeline. No, I think that would be fine. Okay. I think that would be a good idea. I mean, so assuming Conservation Commission approves it tonight, then it's going to go to the to the right. Let's see it on a Gantt chart or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's going to go to Mass DEP, and then your guess is as good as mine how quickly it gets turned around. Right. We just we just we just don't want it to be you know World Series time, and we're still in the same spot. <laughs> Great. Thanks for sharing. Well, <laughs> Final four. <laughs> I'm thinking well, about yeah. it. <laughs> thinking about Mass D &D, &D. then we'll put it out to bid and uh, well. Yeah. All right. Let's see a um, timeline for the next meeting. So um I have a request from um, a representative of Covestro. Um if they would be willing to meet to discuss um, their kick, I think they're kicking around some plans for expansion. Yeah. Um, and they wanted to, to meet. And what I date was, was that, Brian? Well, it could be any time. Okay. And I reached out to Jonathan to see if he wanted to um, sit in on that meeting with Because I've had a lot of meetings with Cavestro. I remember, yeah. They are going to, they, my guess is they are going to, and I don't want to make Joyce mad, but you know what they're going to ask for as part of their expansion. So the rhyme was Biff. Uh, I'm sorry. They'll ask for a tax. Yes, break. they will. We gave them a big one here a few years ago. The rhymes, oh. rhymes with Biff. Well, no, they changed their structure. No, they well, changed, changed their structure. Uh, and got structure. Them, we right. had nothing. Because they to do changed with their it. structure and it hurt them before, and they so changed their are structure. Are you trying to be done by now? What's that? Are you trying to be done? I am. Thanks, Nat. I appreciate it. Yes. Okay. I'm. So, I'm, I'm talking too much. Um. Send me a couple dates. Wait, when you you gone the week of the ninth? Yeah. Y yes. Morning, not, morning, afternoon is better. L late afternoon. I right. just bring something up here, quick. I mean, while well, Jonathan's here, on the solar bylaws, uh, mm. I've been informed by somebody that 
person in town that uh, other other towns involve their agriculture commission <coughs> to decide on what is prime agricultural land. And we refer to that in here, and it's been in there in the past, and, and I don't know, you know, the three of us deciding, or a board like this deciding what's prime land, we don't know, and they involve their agricultural commission to get involved and sign off on it. So I, I guess I would suggest this goes to the Agriculture Commission and see if they want to, at least aware of the meeting and if they want to be involved in it. Because there are several references in here on identifying agricultural land, what's prime, and paying back chapter funds uh, for certain parts of that land. Yeah. They're the ones that, well, I, I think should be involved in it making have some say in it if we can ask them if, if they don't want to well that's fine but I think there needs to be that coordination so I guess Brian I would ask you to send it to them or, or ask the planning board to send it to them or invite them to the meeting and I even say there are references to prime agricultural lands in there that they may want to uh, participate in Yep, I can ask you to send a copy of the Bible over. Is that what you okay. mean, send a copy of the proposed Bible yeah, to them? Right. Make sure they have it. Yeah. Okay. Would that, again, would that refer to yeah. the federal or state definition of primary agricultural soils? I, I think that's what they're referring to is there. The US is the map, is the map, are the, yeah. the other ones you can find on the GIS. Yeah. Sorry, you want to put your panels on the I don't, I don't know who, who has the map, but they do, I, I guess I've never seen the map, so I don't know. Yeah. Comes, it comes from the USDA. Okay. I mean, yeah. to the Ag Commission's good idea, although they're going to, yeah. I've talked to people on the Ag Commission, and, and again, it's one person's pork is another person's prime rib, because one person will say that a, that a parcel is, mm -hmm. is uh, great at farmland, and another right. one will say, no, nah, it's crappy farmland. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Excuse my language. Yeah, they, uh, right. But they're still probably, unless we were three farmers, by Better than us, by absolutely. Chance, yeah. they'll, be, no they'll be better than us. Right. Yeah. Brian, I don't know if this is, yeah. See you later, John. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is the time that you want comments from us, and I think I emailed this to you, but I worry that um, basically it sounds like we want them to get the electric company to tell them exactly what other infrastructure they're going to have to put up on the transmission lines. And I think that will stop any solar development in our town, period. I and agree. And I think that has to come out unless they can demonstrate that there is a law that says the electric company has to respond within a certain amount of time on an application. And, and, and knowing what I do as an electrical engineer, I don't think the electric company can necessarily tell you without having to do a lot of other calculations. And, they, and that it, it's just, I don't think that's reasonable. And I think that would have to come out. I, uh, for me to be able to say, I support this bylaw. I asked for, I, I got in touch with our, our, our friend from Eversource to try to yeah. give some informal advice as to what, what conversations and information is exchanged between potential sole developers and Eversource prior to yeah. permitting. Um, I, I missed him, sent an email, and he called back when I wasn't around. So, but yeah, and even our, even our experience here has shown that you don't know locations till we get out there and we consider many other yeah. things. But but where this is coming from, I, I think they're they're aware of the the latest uh, solar farms that were were developed and on Christian Lane, and they're not online because of the regulators that they want to put in in yeah. town and 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 I think they want to make sure that doesn't happen in the future locations yeah. what it's to, but to, I think I know. think you can't you I can't put a constraint on the electricity delivery infrastructure in the I mean they, they may have to put these things up regardless of solar there's, I mean, there's not like one single reason why a transformer has to go up. And it could certainly be that the solar farms are one influence on it. Right. But it's not going to be the sole reason in any case. 
it's not this, I mean, up, they're, they're putting these things up, we were crawling through the hills, right? Up Masterson Road, up Weber yeah. Road, up all over the place. There aren't any solar firms out there, but they still have to put that infrastructure in right. to keep the voltage regulated. It's an unreasonable request, and unless they've got another town that has this bylaw and can show something like, oh, this is the reason why people will get a response from the electric company, so this will not put a halt to every solar farm that might want to go in. I mean, they're already restricting the size to 10 acres. They're already restricting, yeah. they're, they, they're putting a lot of restrictions in here. Yeah, it was plus two and a half acres for something else. But too. yeah, but so the maximum of 12 and a half acres is gonna, that, you know, not that we have any that are much bigger than that. And our town is only, what, 13 acres now? Well, there's 18, I think, is the biggest one we have. Right, one. so, so yeah. it's, I think, there's enough other restrictions, um, and that one is really not reasonable for you know for a renewable energy facility. I think the battery things are are good because the batteries do need, and, and I suspect here they've actually got data on where you should have the setbacks and what kind of uh, facility it should be. In my understanding, is they they need they need to be in a, a controlled temperature uh, kind of situation. Um, those things I don't have any problem with. I don't really want to limit things to 12 and a half acres, but I don't want to limit it to zero, and that's exactly what that other provision would do. And I have to probably read the ones that they probably have to read it a second time, but that's the one that sticks out to me as unfair, and that's somebody trying to bring that industry to a halt in our town. Um, and I don't think that's fair. So, anyway, I had two rants today. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and that was in the middle of town administrator updates, so. Rants are welcome. Oh, thank you. But <laughs> they really, they we really got to keep me under control here. Yeah, the other thing I noticed, they, they talk about the three years uh, for chapter land. The look back? Look back, we go five years, I think. Assessors go five years, look back. Yeah. I don't know if they were aware of that or not, but. Okay. So also in your packet, there's a proposed scenic roads bylaw? Yes. Which I hope is a lot less controversial. But what I was what I was confused about is nothing showed up in orange italics underlined. No, it's all new. Oh, it's all completely new. Yeah, so okay. that makes more sense. It was sense. one of the mysteries when we had our since I was here the first pub, uh, scenic roads public hearing that we had was looking for the bylaw and it's a the statute's a local opt-in statute. So you've got to opt into the statute and you okay. vote to designate the roads and then you're supposed to adopt the local bylaw. Well, that last part oh, never, we never really got done. So we, had, so we had the state regulations and we had the roads designated. So that's how the, how this, this got fine. But okay. I mean, the, really the motivation for doing this is, is, to, is to really not have um, not have the costs associated with the public hearings uh, uh -huh. for really cases where the trees are dead. Uh -huh. You know, for, for we had to have the, we had the hearing for some of the ones on Chestnut Plain Road, and those, those trees were dead. Beyond yeah, dead. They, they were, yeah, um, yeah, which it does seem silly to have to hold a hearing for that. Yeah, and then the other one was uh, the replacement of stone walls in kind. Yeah. Um, if you need okay. to move them, but you got to put them back, um, it wouldn't require a hearing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, right. so that's a general bylaw. Okay. So that doesn't that, that does understand. not require a public hearing. Okay. Um, under the law. And then the other thing mm -hmm. I just wanted to let um, let the board know that um, the police chief's contract is up at the end of June. Um, as part of um, as part of the discussion <coughs> Joyce and I have had with with uh, Chief Savine, we have touched on. He did have a request for a salary adjustment, yep. um, so it really makes sense to um, consider that in the context of, of his contract negotiation. Yep. Um, so I just wanted yep. to 
we'll have to, we'll have to yeah. full board know that, that those discussions have been happening because um, it's helpful to have a budget number. Um, it doesn't mean that the contract needs to be signed or fully negotiated, but it's easier to have a budget number. Um, the other alternative is that there needs to be a, a later appropriation yep. um, if we're not going to adjust that budget number now. Um, but it, it kind of made sense to talk about it because we also have recommendations from the personnel committee that will be coming um, for salary adjustments as well. Um, that, really, that was just for a point of information. And if, if to give, well, Jonathan's gone now, but I guess he didn't have any objections. Okay. But, you know, Jonathan, for the opportunity to say anything if yeah. they wanted to let us know. Nothing's, nothing's going to be decided at, obviously, at an informal meeting. Okay. Um, and then the last thing, there's, there's a, and Fred, you probably know about this, there's a note from Frontier yeah. that they want to yeah. use some of their um, um, E&D funds. Hands, yeah. 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 Their E&D funds to, to um, take on some of the uh, capital things. Capital, yeah. 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 capital or deferred maintenance kind of stuff. Um, they're looking, um, and I think this is, I think believe this is the time we need to vote. Um, but I'll double check. They want to use 100 and 115,000 of their mm -hmm. excess and deficiency monies to make improvements to yeah. Jim Curtin, bleachers, mm. locker MS, I'm not sure what locker MS is, um, batting cage, vinyl, stair treads, gym floor, gym lockers, radios, yeah. those types of things. It, it was on their capital list that they prepared last year, mm. but that they decided not to bond for. Um, oh, okay. Right? Is that, is that right. fair? Yeah. Right. But isn't the ND part of the regular budget? E and D is the equivalent of our free cash. Right, but then yeah, but is it a separate item? That we I don't have? think we vote things in that of us doing at that meeting. Um, they need permission to spend. Oh. Well, is it just a line item in their budget? Yeah, I, I don't remember having town meeting votes on yeah. that. Like a separate one from the school budget mm -hmm. regarding their E and D, unless we were appropriating new money for it. But I, you know. I am not the yeah. municipal. The letter that we have it would know that. It says the committee's proposed amendment shall be effective yeah, yeah, yeah. If, it is, if it is approved by two thirds of the local appropriating authorities. Oh, which is town meeting. To me, the local appropriating authority is is town meeting. Is town meeting. Okay. All right. Well, that's, then this is something that's a little new to me. Yeah. That, uh, maybe it should have been done in the past. Maybe. Do you think we haven't always followed the letter of the law here? Well, they're voting a proposed amendment to the previously approved FY20 budget. Oh, okay. And, and our share of this is what, 11%, 14%? Why do we... This is money they already have. This is but it's money that you already have, that we have contributed have, okay. somewhere between 11 right. and 15% to right. over the years. Okay. Okay. So that's more of an FYI heads up. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, well, we, we received it the other day, so yeah. Let you know. Okay. Do you have anything else? I don't think so. Uh, special surprise poll hearing at the end. <coughs> you can make one up. Okay. Well then. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh. As I look through this stuff, you are cordially invited. Oh. Oh, this. Wow, this is really late in getting to Hatfield. This is dated January second, twenty twenty. Maybe you guys were like on the B list, yeah. and then they got replies back, so there was space. But, dear Select Board of Waitley, you are invited to the 350th Hatfield anniversary. Steering committee requests the pleasure of your presence on May 31st. Yes, Incorporation Day ceremony. Held in Boston. So and these are the preliminary schedule, May 31st. <coughs> you can participate or maybe watch. Historical recreation, recreation, historical recreation of the river crossing from Hadley to Hatfield. Do we have a river cross are we planning a river crossing for our two fifty? We should. Well, I think that is <laughs> from the yeah. time when we were part of Hatfield was when river crossing was an issue. <laughs> so um, that apparently the re 
this is what then deep deep Bardwell backs us up we we when we were both with Hatfield and used to be with Hadley broke off from Hadley primarily because too many people were losing their lives crossing the river to get to the church on the other side and to be in town you had to have a church so they built a church on this side and hmm. we became Hatfield and then uh, I can't really get a straight story on why Hat Waitley split from Hatfield, but it was probably more interesting because people won't talk about it. So we should so we should walk from Hat Hatfield we should just, to Waitley. We should just walk. We should just walk right up Pantry Road. But there was there was a a toll crossing to Sunderland before the bridge went in. Oh, really? With yes. a boat? Yes. There's some some method. Oh. Yeah, there was a toll. I don't know, 15 That's cents or, or whatever back in the early, in early days before, well, we, where the, before the bridge. Now, yeah, where the bridge is now is crosses to Deerfield, but maybe it was a little further south. Yeah. I'm I'm just to local yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Sunderland blew it then, didn't they? Yeah. On their 350th yeah. or whatever they just had, 300th. Yeah. They didn't have a river crossing no. to Wheatley. Well, all right. So anyways, you're invited. I'm invited. I'm happy. All right. Anything else? I don't think so. I don't. No other party indications. I would entertain a motion then. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.